That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Barbie, the fourth film directed by Greta Gerwig, which Warner Brothers is releasing July 21st, 2023. I know Greta Gerwig did Lady Bird. Yes. Her second feature, uh, Nights and Weekends, she co-directed with Joe Swanberg in 2008, part of the Mumblecore film movement, if anybody remembers those. Um, yes, Lady Bird netted her an Academy Award nomination for Best Director. And then, of course, in 2019, she decided to make... Uh, give the world another adaptation of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, which I did like her version of. Uh, and now here we are with Barbie, which she co-wrote with Noah Baumbach, her partner of several many years, and I believe they first collaborated on 2010's Greenberg. You have seen uh, Baumbach's Marriage Story, as well as White Noise, which Gerwig started. This story, Barbie suffers a crisis that leads her to question her world and her existence. I thought for what it was, it was well done because I assumed Mattel was not going to let someone eviscerate Barbie. So I think for the constraints that I'm sure were in place and probably many, many meetings with marketing and PR, like I'm sure there was a lot involved to get this movie made and for what we get, I'm pretty impressed. Yes, I think it feels a little more flat than I was hoping it to be and has some lulls, but overall it has a very positive message. Uh, there's a, a lot of very interesting people popping up in here and it, it's an easy enough watch. So Barbie lives in Barbie land <laughs> and in Barbie land, all of the ladies are Barbies and all of the men are Ken's. But Margot Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie, which is what she's called. And she's like the standard, like original Barbie. And everything seems perfect, perfect, perfect until one day she starts thinking about things like death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she questions that. She has flat feet at a point, cellulite. So, of course, she freaks out and decides to go visit the weird Barbie played by Kate McKinnon. Mm -hmm. Who lives in a... Baba Yaga type huts on the edge of Barbie land. And Weird Barbie explains to her, oh, I think what's happening is in the real world, whatever girl is playing with you, maybe she's experiencing these feelings and they're being transposed onto you. So the only way to solve this is you need to go and figure out what's wrong with her. And Barbie's resistant, but ultimately agrees to go. She gets there and Weird Barbie tells her, you'll know you'll know who the girl is, like it'll come to you. So Barbie has visions and then figures out that this girl is at a certain school, goes to the school, finds the girl, and the girl is like, I don't, I don't like you, basically. So- And that's Sasha played by Ariana Greenblatt of the film 65. But uh, coincidentally, Sasha's mom works at Mattel. Gloria, played by America Ferrara. And we find out that it's America Ferreira's character, who's the one who's sad and is the one who played with or is thinking about stereotypical Margot Robbie Barbie. <clears throat> so they get together and decide that they need to go back to Barbie land. But it's important to know when Barbie went to the real world, Ken, played by Ryan Gosling, went with her. Mm -hmm. And Ken in Barbie land, all the Kens are like 1950s housewives, like they seem to have no... Barbie Land is like, there's a there's a book called Agalia's Daughters about a matriarch. Or even think of the Nicolas Cage version of Wicker Man where, yeah, all the men ain't shit. Ken feels invisible. He's, you know. So when Ken gets to the real world with Barbie, he sees that the roles are reversed. And Ken discovers the patriarchy, this idea. So when Barbie decides to stay to figure out where to find this girl and what to do, Ken goes back to Barbie land and brings patriarchy with him. So while Barbie was gone, like Ken switched up Barbie land. Yeah. Patriarchy. Uh, uh, Gloria refers to it as like when the conquistadors came, were defeated by bacteria. So <laughs> when no defense mechanisms. So when Barbie gets back with America Ferreira and her character's daughter, they see that now it's really like Ken land. And so the Barbies have to figure out what to do. And the only Barbies who have not... So all of the Barbies are based... Like, they like the patriarchy because they've been so accustomed to running this world that they like the idea of not 
having to be in charge, not realizing that they're jeopardizing their way of life. Their agency. So they're kind of brainwashed. And the only Barbies who can see that are like the weird Barbie, Margot Robbie's Barbie, and all the discontinued Barbies. Mm -hmm. They aren't, like, they are somehow immune because they've felt rejection and all these things. Mm -hmm. So the final act of the film is these Barbies figuring out a way to, like, deprogram the other Barbies. Mm -hmm. And they do. And they're able to bring Barbie Land back to what it was with a twist. Because now they're acknowledging that Ken doll, like Ken's should be their own people. They shouldn't just be defined by Barbie. Because Barbie doesn't want to be defined by anything else. So I guess that's kind of a happy ending. Except the stereotypical Barbie, Margot Robbie's character, she wants to be a human. Like Little Mermaid style. Mm -hmm. Knowing that she will one day die and that the real world is not kind. So she makes that decision and the final scene is Barbie in the real world going to see the gynecologist. The end. Um, there was a lot about it I liked. Mm -hmm. It's cute. I mean, I, I guess the word I would use is cute. It, it Again, yes, it's cute. I did get teary out a couple of times. I think America Ferreira's big monologue mm -hmm. That's, it's, felt very empowering. That is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then at the end when stereotypical Barbie's talking to her creator, uh, who's played by... Uh, Rhea Perlman playing Ruth. Yeah, the woman who invented Barbie. Mm -hmm. Technically, oh. she's talking to her ghost, as they explain yeah. it to us. Uh, that felt... That was also... Because, you know, the film opens with uh, an homage to 2001 A Space Odyssey, which, of course, played in the original trailers for the film. But her meeting with Rhea Perlman was giving me... Uh, Rutger Hauer and Blade Runner. <laughs> I think the film did it. I mean, obviously, the they had to preserve the legacy of Barbie, right? They can't drag it. So I think the film handles that very well. I mean, straight out the gate with the scene you just referred to, we're told that prior to Barbie, little girls played with baby dolls, which only allowed them to aspire to be mothers. And Barbie made little girls believe that they could be anything. Mm-hmm. And so then we get this fantastic world of Barbie land and how everything's perfect and women run everything. I, it's not as subversive as I would have liked. Same. But I think, again, for this corporatized thing that has to preserve this, you know, part of, you know, global culture, it, 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 it did a good job. It's almost like Mattel is saying, we want to try to set the record straight about what we really wanted Barbie to mean when she was first... Uh, Yes. Brought to the market. Yeah. <laughs> because, yes, there are different versions of Barbie that do all kinds of sometimes very inane things, but the Barbies in Barbie Land, it would seem like, are much more diverse. And this is almost, a, besides how they treat the men, a near perfect world. That was one thing that, can, that was confusing to me is Barbie Land is far more diverse than the real world and also more diverse than the Barbies we see in the real world. Because in Barbie Land, there's variety in color, size, gender, sexuality, it would seem. But yeah, Barbies aren't like that. So I, so that seemed weird that it doesn't mimic. <laughs> when Margot Robbie is first experiencing her difficulties, I'm like, oh, is this going to be like, don't worry, darling? Oh, sure. Because <laughs> even how the Barbie line looks, it almost, you know, could be Palm Springs. So as we're meeting the different Barbies, we see that there's one pregnant Barbie that they say is too weird, so they kind of keep her in a corner. I thought that was funny. So that's Midge. She's played by Emerald Fennel, who is the director of a Promising Young Woman. Oh. And Midge, Midge gives another funny moment. At the end. At the end. Yeah. Then we're told that Ken only has a good day when uh, if Barbie looks at him. <laughs> So Ken's entire existence is defined by Barbie. But it's not just, it's Margot, it's the stereotypical Barbie. It's like they're race paired almost. Because it, everybody seems to kind of have one that they're stuck with. We're definitely focused on Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie. Which I, because even at the, Helen Mirren appears as the narrator, but kind of goes away except for one intrusion. Um, it brings us into Margot Robbie's world and said, Here, here's one of those Barbies now. And it's like, oh, of course we're focusing on this one. But I, And again, I think that's where it could have felt a little more subversive or in some more interesting ways. Well, I mean, we do... It's not all about her. Like, I do feel like it's pretty diffused. Because mm. America Ferreira's part is not insignificant. No, but I mean in Barbie world. And I mm -hmm. Sure. And I think, yeah, sure, sure. But... I'm not mad that they made Barbie land so diverse and there is, it, it was just odd to me that Barbies don't reflect that. 
Something we didn't mention because I feel like it felt so uh, superfluous is Will Ferrell plays like the CEO of Mattel. Mm-hmm. And who, who America Ferrell works for. And we find out that in the real world, they, like Mattel knows that there's a Barbie land. And it has happened before that one of those dolls came into the real world. So they consider that an emergency. So then we have Will Ferrell and his board trying to get Barbie back to Barbie land. That felt so... I like Will Ferrell and he's cute in this movie, but that entire arc to me was like pointless. Yes, there were some... Lo- there is one creepy scene They're like, we got to get Barbie. We have to put her back in the box as part of a process. I don't quite understand for going back to Barbie land since they know exactly how to get back there anyway, but there that almost was a creepy moment. Almost. It, it would have been creepier if we didn't know that they knew how to get to Barbie land Mm -hmm. because then it seems like, Oh, so they were putting her in the box to literally carry her back to Barbie land. Cause originally I thought it was creepy because I'm thinking, are they going to put this lady in a box and then burn the box? Or like, yeah. Like what are they? Yes. That's what's creepy about it. And then it's also less creepy because they say, Oh, we don't care about Ken. Okay. So what are we doing with this lady in the box then? Um, so Ryan Gosling, I was told that, People are trying to drum up Oscar buzz for him in this, and that you anybody thinking that needs to see more films. Uh, but I, I thought He's cute. I thought he was cute, and I like. I mean, I guess he did more with the role than Margot Robbie does with Barbie. Like, there, like there's more to Ken than Barbie. I think. Yes, like there's more anguish that he gets to experience as someone that doesn't know who he is, has no Speaking identity. Speaking of Ken, um, Ken, when he gets to the real world, and he, so. It's all set in L.A., which was fun because, like, I recognized everything. Century City But Century City specifically, and he sees all these men doing man things in Century City. And the look on his face, it got a little tired at the end when he goes to the doctor and wants to perform surgery. Mm-hmm. But prior to that, just, he does a really good job with seeming, like, mm-hmm. like, like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I think some of those scenes were at CAA, too. Um, so, uh, Weird Barbie, Kate, Kate McKinnon's character, we find out that, though... She represents the Barbie dolls that people would, like, cut the hair off and tear off limbs. That people are too rough with in the real world. Yeah, and she has this thing where she sits, like, in the splits because clearly someone messed up her appendages. I thought she was funny. Kate McKinnon's, you know, always usually a good time. Okay. I hated the character of America Ferreira's daughter. Sasha. Oh, my God, I hated that character. I wanted... I wish this film would have been about Barbie having to go like that America Ferreras she could have just been the same character except not have a dog I don't think she needed yeah I think it would have been more interesting what is this adult woman who is now disillusioned about her life and she's and she's feeling these things and this this white Barbie that she used to idolize as a child comes back and there are the interesting things we can navigate I mean there is a joke about her being white savior Barbie yes but and I understand why they included the daughter because I think they like they still have to save face like because you don't want it to seem like oh America Ferreira as a young girl believed in Barbie and then realized that that's not reality and she can't be those things that's not a good PR kind of thing to tell so you need to have this young girl discover why Barbie's important so that's the part of the story that felt very corporate to me it did Uh, because imagine because you know Issa Rae in Barbie land is Madam President what about if it was about these two Barbies that go to LA in the real world and see how they're treated differently in the real world? And they fix the real world. Mm-hmm. Because but, in this movie, the real world's still garbage at the end. It's just that in Barbie land, things get back to normal with a twist for the better. Because they do say Barbie land will start to become more equal as the real world. So as women in the real world, world see parody, then that will happen in Barbie land for Ken. So that's like... Kind, I mean, it's it's like scratching the surface. But again, for what it had to be, it's fine. Yeah, it, exactly. But uh, it it already has a sense of seeing it now that's being over marketed. Something <laughs> I wish the film would have had more of is we get this random sort of like commercial for depression Barbie. Mm-hmm. I was expecting the, the movie to be more like that. Mm-hmm. I needed a strangers with candy element to it that. I don't know. Which is what I thought Depression Barbie was. Yes. And and I wish there would have been more of that. Mm -hmm. Because that was really funny to me. Um, Well, and and then, because you had mentioned earlier that in Barbie Land, they're all models of Ken's and Barbie's. But there is an anomaly. There's Alan, played by Michael Cera. Who is Ken's best friend. Mm -hmm. Who can fit Ken's clothes. Mm -hmm. Who seems Uh, perpetually left out. I thought that casting was interesting. Because Michael Cera is a very interesting looking, like just on screen. 
<laughs> just looking at him is funny. <laughs> I think he's funny. If you ever, if you haven't seen him in, he did two Sebastian film, Sebastian Silva movies in one year, Crystal Fairy and Magic Magic. I really like him in Magic Magic. So the plan that Barbie's come up with to, because the Ken, now that it's Ken land and the patriarchy's in place, the Ken dolls are orchestrating an election to vote to like change Barbie land. So the Barbies have 48 hours to figure out how to stop this. And their plan is now that they were, because what I thought was a highlight of the film is America Ferreira gives this like impromptu monologue about how women have to be everything and nothing at the same time and how frustrating it is. And I actually got emotional listening to her. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Barbie realizes, oh my gosh, if, if every Barbie could hear you say this, they would all snap out of it. Because Alexander ships Barbie, her brainwashing goes yeah. right here and that. Yeah. So they decide, oh, we're going to trick these stupid Ken dolls by distracting them in these stereotypical ways, like how men want to like mansplain. So basically all the Barbies go, like all the Barbies who are not brainwashed go to the Ken dolls and basically allow them to mansplain stuff to them so that the Barbies they're occupying can be rescued and deprogrammed mm -hmm. and then they keep doing it. But it all culminates with, they're like, okay, so now that all the Barbies are deprogrammed, we have to get these men to not be so organized. So how are we going to do that? We're going to pit them against each other. So their plan is all the Barbies take the Kens out and let them sing a song. Matchbox 20. But they change the lyrics like, I want to push you around. Mm -hmm. No, I, that, that's a song. That's an actual song? That's an actual song. From I want to push you around? That's like 96 or 97. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it was on um, the school bus. I thought it child. was funny. But what the Barbies start doing is like, whatever Ken is paying attention to them, they start paying attention to a different Ken. So then we get this long sequence of the Kens fighting. Which really wasn't giving me what I needed. No, that's also a lull. It just seems a little silly. And then uh, we we're expecting Will Ferrell and his crew to show up, and they do, and that all seems... I, I feel like something sharper could have been done with that time. I was also... Ryan Gosling does sing and dance, but knowing mm -hmm. that he's a very talented singer and dancer, his performance was... I wanted him to go off more. I wanted him to go off more, too. And there's one very, I thought, pretty nicely choreographed scene towards the end after the... The, the fight scene on the beach. Uh, and I find it interesting that all this this talk about mansplaining, it's like, that's really, that's literally what his character is doing in La La Land, his Oscar-nominated role. Yeah, overall, um, I there, there were pockets where I felt like, and it, it almost like they had a really good idea, but they had to, but it, it wasn't, like, there seems to be some filler in here. Or maybe there were some limitations. Or, or maybe, yeah, like the corporate said, no, you can't do that. So then we get, may, maybe that's what the Will Ferrell character is. Representative of? Well, just like th that's why, why we see him more than I feel like we should. Because mm -hmm. he has nothing to do. Well, and then uh, Margot Robbie, when she's meeting with them in the conference room, and they have to explain why it's all men running this company that's supposed to be for, about and for women. But they don't give a good explanation. <laughs> Not really, no. Um, also amongst the Barbies, because... Um, Harry Neff and Emma Mackey and Dua Lipa. Oh, and then um, we get Michael C Cena. No. John Cena. John Cena mm -hmm. and Dua Lipa are in it a couple of times, as like as cameos. Mermaid Barbie. As Mermaid Barbies. I, I didn't need that. I, oh, I wanted to comment because I saw memes people making fun of the wigs, but B Barbies don't have good hair either. I mean, in fact, I often reference Barbie hair as being like bad hair. It's plastic. So, yeah, it's plastic hair. So I don't have a problem with the wigs looking kind of raggedy. My only issue is that it's not consistent because some characters have nice hair. Like a couple of the black Barbies who have braids, like their hair looks really nice and natural. So For once, and that's... Yeah, so I'm glad, but but it's also like, they look really nice, but then, yeah, Dua Lipa's wig looks kind of crazy. But... Yeah, she's, I think she's supposed to, though. I also kind of didn't love Margot Robbie's hair. I mean, it did look like Barbie hair. It so, did. But I kind of, yeah. And some of her outfits... I'm not very familiar with Barbie dolls, so I don't know what kind of clothes they had. and She wasn't as poppin' in some scenes as I guess I thought Barbie would be. Sure. Like, her final outfit is kind of a frumpy dress with clunky shoes mm -hmm. but maybe that's because now she realizes that high heel stilettos are uncomfortable and tight clothes aren't mm -hmm. maybe yeah it's not oh so i guess maybe that's why she looked kind of like that normal then i guess i because then in the very end when she's in the real world she's wearing like a sensible sport coat and birkenstocks 
So maybe that was the evolution mm -hmm. from like sexy Barbie to we, sensible Barbie. You don't have to be sexy every time you step out of the house. You can be comfortable. Um, and also for the Cannes, Simo Liu, Kingsley ben -Adair, Shuri Gatwa, and Scott Evans. What would you give this movie? Um, I think, I don't know how well or not this film will be received, but it gives me, I feel like in 20 or 30 years from now, it's going to be kind of like Robert Altman's Popeye with Shelley Duvall and Robin Williams. It, it has that kind of, there's a, like a cult quality about it that, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I would give it three out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Bye.